Sup guys, me again, welcome back to another video, and today we're doing something a little bit different, some D&D speed art. As a quick disclaimer, uh, for anyone who doesn't know what D&D is, I recommend you watch this video right here, it's very helpful. For those who do know what D&D is, let's -a go! First up, Mayo. Mayo is a tiefling with a super cool robotic arm. He's my character's best friend, introducing himself by saving my life from a rampaging owlbear, and once drank 47 beers without passing out. It's a shame he died trying to save Odin, who was poisoned, then getting backstabbed by another party member, and is now in the ninth layer of hell as his past self Azeroth, and is purple and evil and weird. Odin's fine now though. Mayo slash Azeroth isn't the smartest or the most tactical, but he makes up for it with his enthusiasm and compassion, despite his dark past. He's also incredibly fearless, leaping into battle no matter the danger. Well, unless it's ghosts. He's terrified of ghosts. He used to be Azeroth the Bounty Hunter, until he got betrayed and almost killed. However, some magic saved him, turned his skin red, and wiped most of Azeroth's memories. When he woke up, he named himself after the first thing he saw. A jar of mayo on the counter. He's a barbarian blood hunter multi-class with some terrifying blood magic. He uses his blood magic to weaken his opponents before rendering them to pieces with his greatsword. He's the sort of hopeless romantic of the group. Let's just say his loved one also didn't last long. Must run in the family. The craziest Mayo moment, apart from that whole ninth layer of hell thing, would probably be the other time he died, when a giant Aeorian Reverser, called Cupcake, turned him to stone and shattered him into a million pieces. We sacrificed a goblin to get him back, but then we kind of missed the goblin, so we sacrificed a bandit to get the goblin back. Croak is simultaneously zero and a thousand. Croak's main interests are mastering the various spirits in combat and getting high. Croak can be very childish at times, which makes sense, as he's the youngest in the party. He once saved a party member from kidnappers by throwing such a loud tantrum they got annoyed and let him go. He's also big on tradition, becoming a father so he can teach his children the way of the samurai. Although he was one in grun years when that happened, Croak assured us he was 18 in human years. Croak was zero when a mighty tyrant called Poe, who's a fat panda spirit wielding warrior, killed his whole family. Well. Except for his uncle, who Croak ran to and asked for help to become a samurai. When Poe caught wind of this, he killed Croak and his uncle in one blow, and Croak arose from the dead a thousand years later. Croak is a fighter with a homebrew spirit samurai subclass. He's super fast, zooming from enemy to enemy with its quickling spirit. In the group, he's a wild card, always killing grandmas and seducing monkeys. He helps us come up with some of the more unconventional plans, some of which actually worked. Mm -hmm. 
Next is Odin. He's a super strong Leonin who, unsurprisingly, has some ties with Norse mythology. He's our strongest teammate and always tries to prove he's stronger than our other barbarian, Mayo, which led to some hilarious interactions. He's not big on feelings, often using anger as an outlet for grief. Like that time he used to curse Rancer to give a child cancer because he found out that his mother died. However, one feeling he does have is bravery. No matter if we're fighting demigods, purple worms, or giant dragons, he's always the first in the fight. Odin was always a great fighter, leading the charge in a big, plot-related war that I don't know too much about, I kinda zone now. His dad died in the war. However, Odin is remembered as a war hero. His life goal is to become a demigod, which is very ambitious, but none of us want to burst his bubble. Would you? Odin is our big, strong Leonin Barbarian. He uses the power of elemental fire to give himself an advantage in battle. He's like a gentle giant. Except he isn't that gentle. Actually, he's kind of rude. He's our rude giant. One of the main moments with Odin I remember was when an NPC frog called Kermont had orange eyes, which meant he was getting possessed by the main bad guy, Lolf. However, we had a bit of time, and our resident bad guy expert told us only true love's kiss could save him. We asked who Kermont had a crush on, to which he replied, Odin. After a lot of reluctance, Odin crankily kissed Kermont. However, it didn't work because Odin doesn't love him back, which means he kissed Kermont for nothing. Let's just say, Odin wasn't too happy to hear that. Vete is the newest member of our team, a wood elf with a Russian accent. She has a bit of a childlike demeanor, but don't let that fool you. Her hands of harm and healing are deadly in a fight. Once, she killed a dragon with just her fists. Vete is very quiet, often watching us from the shadows and chiming in when she has something to say. That makes her mysterious, and the party is a bit scared to get to know her. However, she contrasts that with intense emotional reactions. Someone insulted her, and she curled up in a ball and started crying. We don't know how much of it is a front, but we're starting to suspect she was never trying to trick us. Vete being mysterious comes with its downsides, as we know hardly anything about her backstory. However, what we do know is that she was once part of a super duper evil cult until her parents tried to sacrifice her, so she ran away into the forest and that's where she found me. You know, standard D&D stuff. Vete's our super cool butt kicking, back flipping, wall running, arrow catching monk. She uses some wacky dark magic for her hands of healing and harm in order to do great effects in battle. Uh, she's a bit weird, a bit scary, but ultimately she's incredibly helpful and we wouldn't have gotten out of some of our toughest situations if it wasn't for her. Bryn is a drow warlock who has Tiamat as his patron. Unfortunately, they don't have a great relationship, and to make matters worse, Lolf is trying to get him to kill his party. She keeps brainwashing him and conjuring illusions to turn him against us, but we've managed not to get killed by him yet, although we've gotten close. Bryn is a little bit of an emo, having a whole nobody understands my tortured soul, ooh I miss my parents vibe, mixing that with the whole yeah I totally don't care about you guys that Rocket Raccoon and similar characters have. 
Although recently, he's put his life on the line to protect the party, so he may be going through a character arc. Lastly is my character. Snalper is a skittish kobold who's supposed to be super intelligent, but I'm playing him, so you can guess how that goes. Snalper is a coward. He's terrified of pretty much everything, often hiding in fights, yeeting spells from behind Mayo, or a rock. He's also pretty friendly though, despite his horrible charisma. He always tries to resolve situations peacefully, probably because he's a coward. He hasn't told the party his backstory out of fear, and I know that they're watching this so I'm not going to say it here. What he did say was that he fled his clan due to adventurers that showed up and killed his family. While all the characters think he told the truth, all the players know that he was lying. He also met Vete in his backstory, and she helped them to escape from the forest and healed his wounds. Snalper is an artificer inventor who uses technology instead of magic to fight his foes. He's the smartest party member and the moral compass for the party. Probably due to the fact that his intelligence makes him see that forcefully giving a child cancer is probably not a good idea, Odin! The most epic moment I remember about Snalper is when we were looking for a magic shard of a gem that'll let us meet a guy for story reasons. It was important. We entered a cave and saw a gigantic monkey with the shard on a crown on its head. We attached a rope to Brynn and he levitated himself, grabbing the shard, but waking the monkey. Snalper ran forward and he was yeeted across the cave, taking him to zero hit points. I rolled his first death save. Seven. I rolled his second death save. Three. If I roll below ten again, Snalper would be gone. I rolled his third death save, which rolled off the table and under the fridge. We all agreed it wouldn't count before pulling it out. A natural one. The lowest you can possibly roll. Now, tensions were high, adrenaline was pumping, I rolled his final death save. 13. Snalper exploded in a ball of fiery red magic, launched himself from the hole and beat up that monkey. I was shaking for a good minute after that, because I'm way too invested in the story that we're all making with D&D. And after this, I hope you can see why. Thank you all for watching, and goodbye from Combat Comet.